Hey everyone, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we are starting the long-awaited Hypershade series. So I'm going to be going over in this series, in each one of these videos, the different nodes and the different setups that we can use to accomplish different things with Maya's Hypershade, as well as making really customizable shaders that we can use in all of our projects. So today we're going to be going over three nodes. I'm going to choose three nodes for each one of these videos just to keep them kind of short and sweet, but also allow you to learn what each one of these nodes does and how we can use them to get the results that we're trying to go for. So today we're going to go over the multiply divide node, the AI color correct node, and the AI layered shader. The last one is technically a shader, but the way it plays into it, we're still kind of working with it as a node. So I'll explain that when we get to it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please make sure you like and subscribe because there's gonna be more videos on this. And if you wanna take that support a step further, you are free to join me on Patreon. There are free model downloads. You get your name in the credits of all my videos as a supporter as well as early access to any of my courses that will be coming out exclusively on Patreon or on any of my other platforms. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so I have just a basic sphere set up right now currently in Maya. So if we just turn off our shader, you can see this is all we're working with. So we don't really have anything crazy going on here. The shader has a substance type material added to it. This is just a Quixel Megascans uh, asset that I'll be using today to kind of just visualize everything. So what we're gonna do is we're going to build out a brick shader that is a little bit more customizable than just using the regular maps that we have built into Maya. So what I've done is I've imported all of the materials using the Substance Painter import tool. So it's right under here. You can do this for multitudes of different materials. They don't have to just come from Substance Painter. It's actually a really nice quick way to build out a standard surface shader and then not have to drag nodes around and do all that stuff. So it's a little bit of a shortcut. I've got videos on that if you're curious, but let's go ahead and get this rendered out and we'll see what we're dealing with here. So if I go to renderer, change it to Arnold, you're gonna see right now we just have this really basic lit brick. In fact, let me just kind of light that up a little bit more. Right now, this is really just a couple of maps. I have disconnected the diffuse map because this is kind of where we're gonna start focusing. So I'm gonna go ahead and maximize my hyper shade here. We're gonna go up to windows, rendering editors and hyper shade. All right, so we got hyper shade open here. So looking at this right now, this is just kind of a standard import from the substance painter tool. So if you've used it before, you're kind of familiar with how this looks. So the first node we're going to look at is what we would use if we were going to add ambient occlusion to our maps in Maya. So we're going to use what is called the multiply divide node. So we're gonna take both of our ambient occlusion and now our albedo map, and then we're going to go ahead and hit tab, type in multiply divide. That's gonna give us this multiply divide node. This node is gonna take both of them and kind of merge them together. And you can do a different, you can do a couple of different computations for this, but this is really gonna do is take that AO grayscale texture and then multiply it on top of the albedo map. So it's gonna darken the crevices and just give us a much nicer looking shader. So currently, if I take this and I put this off to the side here, and if we take this, put this off to the side here. So if we look at this, we're gonna look at Maya here. Okay, so we have our shader right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our albedo and we're going to drag the out color into input two. And then this output is gonna go directly to the out color of our brick material. So we'll drag this all the way up here to the base color. A little hard to do with the screens this small. Uh, base color, so there we go. All right, and I messed up, that actually needs to go into input one. So then we're gonna take the out color of our, out, our AO and we're going to drag it into input two. And you can see over on this side, our crevices start getting darker, everything kind of darkens up so we get that nice kind of lighting effect. This really helps to work with the displacement map that we already have visible on this. Okay, so this already kind of takes care of how you would normally set up one of your texture maps, but what if we wanted a little bit more control? This is where we're gonna talk about our next node, which is going to be the AI color correction node. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this real quick. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and flip these because they're just kind of out of order. So with our albedo map, let's say I wanna change the color of my brick. We're gonna disconnect that real quick. We're gonna go tab, type in AI color correct. This is gonna be our color correct node. So what this is gonna allow us to do is change a bunch of different image properties of the texture file that we're plugging into it. So we're gonna take our out color, go into the input. We're gonna take our out color and go into the input of our multiply divide shade. We wanna go ahead and check and verify that that's still working. So nothing's changed. Our material is still acting the way it's supposed to, which is perfect. So I'm gonna put my hyper shade here again. All right, so now with this node set up, we have all these different controls now. So if I wanted to 
change my bricks to like blue or purple or anything like that. I can control that with a hue shift. I can also change the saturation of my textures. There's a whole lot that I can now do with this to better control and change the texture without having to take it into like Photoshop and manually adjust it and then re-import it. There's a lot of this stuff that we can actually do natively inside of Maya. So these tools are really important. These nodes are really important to learn. So the next thing I wanna do is say I want this brick to be set up in an alley that has a bunch of graffiti on it. So how would I go about accomplishing that? This is where we're gonna go over the AI layered shader node. This is technically its own shader. So what this node allows us to do is to take multiple shaders and merge them into one standard material. This is where we start to build a more kind of complex library of materials. So we're gonna leave our brick the way it is. This is good, this is set up. We can control the brick however we want to, but we're gonna disconnect this and then that's gonna leave our surface shader. This surface shader is the node that is technically applied to your model. So this is what matters. So if I kind of close this right now, you can see that the only thing showing up now is displacement and that's what we want. So we're gonna do a couple of things here. We're gonna go tab. We're going to add AI standard surface. We're gonna add a new one of these. We're gonna delete that because we don't need it. We are also going to add a file texture. So we'll hit that. And if you wanna link this place 2D texture to this other one, you can. Uh, I don't usually generally do that, so it doesn't really matter. So this is where we're gonna start building out our new material. So the first thing is we need to assign a file to this. This file texture node is going to be this transparent file here. We're gonna hit open. And that's gonna be kind of our driver for this. This standard surface is going to be our color for this. So the next thing we'll set up is we're gonna create our AI layered shader. This is gonna be our main shader. We can delete this. And so now we can start to kind of rebuild this a little bit. So this out color is going to go into our surface shader because this is going to be the main driver for all of this now. Our brick, our main brick material is going to get dragged into the first layer of this material. So in order to do this, what we can do is we can click on our layered shader. You can middle mouse drag the brick to your input. That should input that. And now if we minimize, we have our brick back. So we're good to go. Now we wanna add this graffiti. So what we have to do is we need to enable layer two on the layered shader, and we're gonna do two things here. So first thing is the standard surface, we're gonna middle mouse drag this to the input. Then the file is going to get middle mouse dragged to the mix. So now if we minimize this, you can see our graffiti now shows up on here. This is where this gets really cool because if I move this to the side here, now with this all configured, I can take this standard surface and I can do whatever I want with it. So say we want some bright green graffiti. I can now adjust and change the color of that graffiti just because it's being driven by an alpha. So this is really cool for adding grunge or dirt or anything anything that you need to add to your scene that's kind of secondary. Instead of going back and forth in the Substance Painter or whatever your texturing application is and manually putting that stuff there, you can actually do a lot of this compositing in Maya. So with all of that said and done, this is kind of what our shader network looks like. So if we wanted to really kind of organize this out, put our two materials there. Our surface shader is kind of our output. Our layered shader is our kind of driver. And we have this file down here. So all we've done is add two new nodes to the system, but it's given us this infinite control now. So if I want this bright green graffiti on a blue brick or a purple brick, I can do that. So this gives us the control to change the material at really nice minute levels. And these are the first three nodes that I felt were really important to talk about in this series because these are how we can do a lot of like independent mixing. So that's gonna be it for this video. I, again, I wanted to keep these short and sweet. We went over the three nodes. We went over multiply divide. We went over AI color correct. And we went over AI layered shader. So there's a lot you can do with this, just this initial setup, especially with like the color correct node. So I implore you to take some time to explore these and kind of play with the different settings to get familiar with them because in each sense, each one of these nodes has its own different set of controls and they're very important to learn and figure out what they can do. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do more of these on separate nodes. We're going to explore each different type of node because this is something that I feel like a lot of people haven't done. It's important to understand these nodes and what they do, especially if you're going to be some sort of like technical material artist. You wanna understand how these work. So each video is gonna go over three new nodes or a combination of nodes from other videos. 
We're gonna work through the different things that we can do with all of these. And this will hopefully be a really good series that'll get you kind of familiar with Hypershade and how it works and how materials inside of Maya work, as well as it'll give you a baseline understanding to know what generally in most 3D applications these nodes kind of do, because most of this stuff carries across multiple applications. So the reality is, is that multiply divide nodes in Maya, Blender, Houdini, whatever, they all generally do the same function. They're all just mathematical functions. So it's good to have an understanding of these. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, and let me know in the comments down below if you'd like explanations further into these, if you want to dive deeper into what these nodes do. Uh, I'm always curious to figure out what it is you guys want to be learning. So let me know in the comments. It's the best way to engage with me and kind of figure out what we're doing and, and what I'm making content wise for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.